Hey guys, welcome back. So the first thing we need to do is we need to set up our directory structure of where our project's going to live. I'm going to put it in the projects directory of my C drive. And you can see I already have a folder created there. So let's go ahead and make the actual directory that this thing's going to sit in. So we're going to say make directory. And um, we'll just call this... Uh, this is going to be like a, a movie site. So I'm just going to kind of go with the typical feel that I have from other tutorial uh, technologies that I use so we're going to kind of build a basic movie website so we'll say uh, make their movie movie I'll just call it flask movie all right so let's go ahead and uh, go into that directory now we need to use virtual environment and that comes with Python 3.5 and it's really important because we want to be able to isolate our development environment for each project that we're working on. So if you're using Windows, um, all you have to do is just say virtual env and then I give it the name env as like an environment. Just um, That's what I call my environment. So this is going to go through, it's going to install um, some basic things that your environment needs which is like pip um, which is a common installer that, that we use to install Python pip files and wheel files and uh, makes things a lot easier for us. Now that this environment has been set up for us, though, we need to actually enter into it. So that's what we're going to do now. And I didn't mean to do that. I need to go back into that directory. So we're going to go into the environment directory that was created for us. You know what? I'm going to make this uh, editor just a little bit bigger so you guys can see it. All right, so we're inside the environment directory there. And now we need to go inside the scripts directory. And in here, you're going to notice that we have this activate, and that's actually what we need to run in order to start our environment. And now you can see on the left-hand side, inside these uh, parentheses, we have env, which is the name of the environment that we created. So that lets us know that anything, any sort of Python library that we need to use, Flask included, because really that's just a Python library, that's going to be put inside, um, inside that folder, or inside of this uh, virtual environment. So now, that being said, make sure you have Python installed. So if we type Python, you should be able to see that Python went ahead and uh, it went into the Python editor, or the Python interpreter, I'm sorry. Um, so we're going to run the install uh, command, the pip install flask. And this will automatically detect the version of flask that we should be using with our Python installation. And right now it's being flagged by my antivirus, which is kind of annoying. But it'll go through in just a second. So now everything should be installed correctly. And that'll be installed just to that environment, so that way Flask is not shared with any other projects that you may have. And to make sure that's working, let's go ahead and pull up our Python interpreter. And we're going to try to import Flask. So we'll say from Flask, import, and make sure it's a capital F for the uh, import, and then say Flask. And if you get no error message there, that means that it's actually working inside of your virtual environment. And if you want to exit out of it, press Control-C and enter, and you'll exit. All right, let's go ahead and add some directories that we're going to need, that every project needs. And any sort of web application you have, you should always have a folder for your templates, and then you should have another folder for your static content. And when I mean static content, I mean like CSS, HT, um, CSS, uh, JS files, like JavaScript, or uh, image files. So let's go ahead and create those folders now. We're going to create a folder called static, and then we're going to create another one called templates. And now I want to go into the static folder that we just created, and we're going to create make their um, CSS. Make their, uh, not, uh, make their JS, and then we're going to do it again for images. So if we look, we now have three folders here, CSS, images, and JavaScript. And let's go back to the main project folder. And here we're going to go ahead and create our first uh, minimal uh, Flask application just to make sure that everything's working. So this is where we're going to need to make use of our editor. With Visual Studio, I can just open a website. And sometimes I find it easier to do this, but I can just grab Flask Movie and just kind of open up the entire directory. 
Visual Studio also has the ability to be able to set up a Flask project if you like it that way. But the problem with that sometimes is that it adds folder structures and things for you that you may not be familiar with and it doesn't kind of follow along with this tutorial series. So that's why I'm going to just simply edit the Python files inside of the editor and then yeah we'll just add it inside the editor instead of creating the Python project actually so Visual Studio I'm gonna go ahead and have this be a project so this is um, dependent just on what type of editor you have so if you do not have Visual Studio you don't have to have a setup that looks like this my particular editor is telling me um, when I create this uh, Python project that you know I have all these uh, these tools that are installed like WorkZoog was uh, something that, that Flask is built on top of so those are all uh, libraries that Flask installed with its markup like uh, this uh, Jinja 2 that all came with it and everything so um, that's just being helpful by telling me that it's there but this Flask movie here this is the root directory of the project and what I mean by root directory is that like if I went um, over to my C drive and clicked on projects uh, the um, Flask movie here this is the root directory so that shows me that that's what I got here. So if I went ahead and just uh, added a new Python file, so you just need to add a new new file no matter how you do it, it doesn't matter. It needs to have the .py extension obviously for a Python file. And we're just going to call this um, app.py. All right, and now any Flask application, you're going to have to have uh, the actual Flask name imported. So we're going to say from Flask import Flask, just like we did with our interpreter earlier when we tested the installation. And now we're going to say app equals Flask. And then we need two underscores and, and then say name. And that gets passed in um, from the command line when we start it up. Now we're going to create an app.route. And now this, um, if you've ever done Django before, is you're just defining your route. So a forward slash means root directory, so it means uh, this will be like the home page. And we can call that like index. So you can call this whatever you want, but I'll just call it index. And we'll just say return hello flask. Now we're going to say if name, and this has to be under two underscores on each side of it, equals and then once again two underscores main then we'll say app.run now what this does is it says that if this app name like app.py is run directly it's going to be assigned the value main and it's saying if that is the case so if you run that directly from the command line the value will be main and if it's main go ahead and run the application now, if you were to import this application somewhere, typically the import code gets run, but main, the name of the, the main gets changed to whatever the imported um, app is called. So that, therefore, like if this was imported, like if another script imports this file, it says import app, then it's not going to equal main anymore. The name will be changed and this code will not execute. So this is only going to execute from the command line. Um, if it's executed directly, that's what that means. And it's very confusing, by the way, I think, for uh, newbies in Python. So now in order to go ahead and run this, we need to pull up our command prompt. And we should be able to say um, just Python app.py. And now by default, um, Flask comes with a uh, development server so that way you can test your applications instead of having to actually deploy it to an actual web server but it'll host it on that local host address with the 5000 port so if we actually went to it the root directory is going to be um, executed and you can see we defined our root directory with this right here so this is where we actually said root directory fire this function and this function just simply returned the string that said hello flask it's not even returning uh, HTML or anything like that so if we inspected it you can see that um, this isn't anything but just text But if we wanted it to be HTML, we could actually do that. We could just say H1. And 
And I can even put like a inline style inside here. So I can say style equals um, color red. So obviously I'd have to actually, because I, it's a string that we're returning, I need to change that to a single quote so it doesn't match. Or I could escape it either way, it doesn't matter, but single quote might be a little bit easier to visualize. So if we restart our server and we refresh this, you can see that it's actual HTML with the inline styles applied. All right, guys, so that's how we get up and running with Flask quickly. So we're going to go ahead and end this video here. We'll get into some more stuff in the next video. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.